All right, here we go. YFN Lucci, welcome back. What's happening? How you feeling? How you been? Man, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I see you've gotten uh, richer since last time we talked. Yeah, you know, you know, still hustling, trying to get richer and richer. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. And before we go any further, brand new project, Wish Me Well 3. Yeah, man. Me against the world. I dropped the December 4th. That was um, Friday. You feel me? And basically, man, this is what the people been waiting on. You feel me? They been waiting on this for like two years. So it was time to get to them. You smell me? I got the, um, I had, I got the, um, I went with Me Against the World and I had did my, um, my cover shoot with Mike Miller. You know, Mike Miller shot like a lot of Tupac shit. Mm. And we went to like my old hood. We went to my old house, like all my houses. We shot in front of the yard. And we had the roll rut truck. Um uh, damn. I went yeah, we had the roll rut truck. I was really trying to do my cover like um the car the two cover. You feel me? When he was standing in front of the um um roll rut motherfucker. Like the okay. same way. But I did it one time, then the the picture didn't come out right. I don't know if I liked my outfit or not. And I just did it again and I liked it the pit when I was sitting on top of the truck. And that shit just well, you actually mentioned Tupac in some of the lyrics uh, on the album. Yeah. On that um, Road On with Mizer. You feel me? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's an um, pop sample, matter of fact. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a pop sample. And, you know, me, myself, I mean, now I'm tripping. <laughs> I keep saying that shit. <laughs> uh, look, uh, Me Against the World, though, that shit came about, like, you know, when I first came in the game, when I first dropped, um, Wish me well and wish me well too. It's like I was getting so much love, man. You see, you can tell from like some of my features and shit. And I kind of, I felt like, you know, I ain't put out no music after that in like 2017. Now I came back with the um, Long Little Nut, but after Long Little Nut, I ain't put out no music. They, they were waiting on Wish Me Well 3, you feel me? So, Shit, certain people start acting different in the game, you feel me? Couldn't get certain features and shit. So I I went with a goddamn me against the world. Well, uh the way I even found out about the album was they reached out to me to clear a sample. Yeah, the one with the, the Boosie. The Boosie sample, which was the I mean, although you didn't use that part of the interview, it's the hypnotized with hatred interview. And they mad because they was on it was in that in that third grade class with you, but they don't have the same hustle as you. You know, they hate you for no reason. They hate you for, they hate you for your success. If you was a local rapper and you, and you didn't have much, they would love you. You know, and these people, you develop hatred in your own city. Yeah. Yep, yep, so we got that cleared for you. And uh, you actually got Boosie on the song. Yeah, man, yeah. That was actually my own um, engineer. Um, shout out to Keith. That was his idea. I had laid a verse on the beat, and Keith put the he he snatched your um interview because what I was talking about in my verse, and he just put Boosie talking. And one day Boosie came to the yo, and we let him hear that shit. And Boosie like this motherfucker hard. <laughs> he went straight in and did his verse. And how we got came with that one. Yeah, it's a tough song. Uh, definitely one of my favorite songs on the album. I appreciate your uh, ass for on um, clearing that motherfucker too. Yeah, of course, man. No, fly, fly hit me up and just told me, told me what the situation was, and I'm like, all right, let's work it out. Not a big deal. Me and him go back since before you, you ever signed to him and everything else like that. So yeah, I know you told me the first time. Yeah, yeah, we've always had a good relationship. Well, I'm assuming that that Boosie got on the song before he got shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did this. I ain't gonna lie, that song. We did that song June 2018. So, so yeah, that been a minute, you feel me? That was way before oh, you he got been, shot. You've been sitting on it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I did, okay. I did, I did mine. I did, I think, I did mine June 8, 2018. He did it verse probably like September in 2018. Yeah. Okay. When you heard about him getting shot, what'd you think? Uh, you know, I just I was trying to get in touch with him, trying to make sure he was all right. You feel me? You know, I fought with Boosie, man. Boosie be kicking in and shit all the time, so I just was trying to make sure that all was good. 
I couldn't get yeah. in contact with him, but I wrote his, his little cut and got down. She got down, told him he was good. She said he got shot in the leg, though, but he was good. Yeah, he had like two operations. Uh, he's in a wheelchair right now. Still yeah. doing shows, though. Hell Still yeah. showing up in his wheelchair on stage. He better. Hell yeah. You you cannot stop Boosie, man. He will hustle to his dying breath. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the Boosie the Boosie shooting actually follows the Mo, the Mo three murder. Mm hmm. And you and Mo three, I found a video of the two of you in the studio together. Yeah, I got a um, I got a song with Mo three. He had we had Jay did the video too. They uh -huh. well, they ain't put it out yet, but we had Jay did the video. I I got another song. I just did another song right before he passed. He um some somebody had a hook with him on it. I did. You know we had a little relationship. I fought with Mo three though. Yeah, yeah. His music yeah. hard as fuck. Yeah, I agree, man. I interviewed him a couple of years back, and what was what was really sort of sad about that interview was, you know, when I went back and looked at it again, we talked about how he he f knew that he had money on his head in Dallas and, you know, and he doesn't really use security all the time, but, you know, he knows he got beef there. And, and he, he literally said in the interview, like, well, I don't think anyone chased me down or nothing else like that. And that's literally what happened. S security sometimes is with me with the shows and stuff, you know, when the promoter booked me, you know, they got their own security, you know, they accommodate me and shit, shout out to them, you know, but other than that, like, I ain't worried about none of that, bro. So you know, I ain't got no security. I'm not, I'm not out here, nobody chasing me down, trying to do nothing to me. So I ain't worried about none of that. And it's just sad, man, uh, to see someone with that much talent. You know, Boosie was fucking with him also. You know, they had the mixtape project together. You fuck with him. Uh, yeah. um, very talented cat, man. Very musical. Um, you know, had really great songs. Um, like that song, uh, uh, "Everybody Ain't Your Friend." Mm -hmm. It was just a great, a great song, man. Hey, yeah, yeah. That young, it's real. You can feel that shit. You feel? Yeah, that? yeah. You feel that song to your soul, man. You're like, yeah, everybody's not your friend. Yeah. Uh, it's sad, man. I mean, when you look at these situations, you know, you look at Boosie who got shot. You look at Mo Three who got killed. These are two people that are close to you in certain ways. You know, it's it's one degree of separation. You you know these guys. You talk to them. You hang out with them, and you see these type of things happen with them. You know, you look at all your various situations. How does that make you feel? Man, you know, shit. I just still keep God first and just, you know, safety first. You know, a nigga gonna always stay dangerous. And, you know, you just gotta, you just gotta, you just gotta pay attention, bro. You feel me? You gotta got down slip account. So you got to always be on point in the game because, yeah, you know you somebody. You're a target. Everybody a target. If that shit, you feel me? We got money, nigga got jewelry around every day. Nigga in these type of car. So you got to be cautious. You feel me? And sometimes nigga just be living so much well, they slip up. You feel me? Well, you actually have a, a bulletproof GMC? Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what's up. Yeah, fucking uh, yeah. Uh, how much does something like that run? I paid 145 for it. That's not bad. Nah, hell no, nah, not to save your life. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, compared to what it does? <laughs> Man, yeah. 145? And, and like the windows don't roll down all the way? Um, The window don't roll down at all in the back, the, the back, but the front, it rolled down like a little bit. A little bit, yeah. That's what I heard. And and those cars are like crazy heavy. Yeah, hell yeah, very heavy. <laughs> yeah. That shit heavy. Yeah. Hell, the door, the door is so heavy on that bit. Door hey, heavy, man, well, motherfucker. I'm glad you're taking your shit, you know, your safety serious because, you know, like I said, when I talked to Mo Three, he wasn't really like tripping like that. It seems he was, he almost like laughed it off and. Now, you know we're gonna laugh situation. it off. You know we're gonna laugh it off because shit. They don't even really be wanting to think that way. So that's how that shit be. Yeah. Sad, man. Sad. Well, on the new project, the biggest song is is Wet. 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 And right. I got I got Mulatto on the remix, too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that now, that song has actually been around for a while. Yeah. I made that song. I mean, we put that song out 
Damn, February the, on, on Valentine's Day, February 14th. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you put it out back in February and it's just now getting on this album now? It started, see, now nah, look, I put it out in February. It started going crazy on TikTok and shit. And the label, mm-hmm. they just started pushing it. So, damn, man. It, it, it ended up getting a whole bunch of views and shit. Got them screens going crazy. That's, it went gold, you feel me? So, you know, the label going to put it on the album. Because shit, it, shit, it's going crazy. The screen. You know, the screen going to carry on to the album. So, shit. Right. Because I looked it up. It's got 50 million views on Spotify. That's just like the main version. I'm yeah. not even counting the, the mulatto version. So, the 50 million views on Spotify, 25 million on YouTube. I don't know what, you know, Apple has, but you could probably add another 20 to 50 that, over there. So, over 100 million people have been rocking to that song. Hey, Plus that the shit. remix. Yeah, that shit going up. We just shot the video too. We got Desert Bank in that motherfucker. That shit fire. Mm. Yeah. Okay, why'd you decide to put Mulatto on the remix? Man, you know, she found the A, you feel me? She got down, um, she going crazy right now. You know, the, I knew all the girls were gonna like her. You feel me? Well, I know all the girls like her, so shit. Had to put on that motherfucker. And she just rapping for the South. You feel me? Why not? And the song called Wet. So I needed somebody who's gonna talk some freaky shit. You feel me? Uh, yeah, she definitely talks some freaky shit. What was that one line about like the balls like a goalie or some <laughs> shit? Like, <laughs> I had to just shake my head when I heard that uh, one. I guess like, right. she catch them balls, man, like a goalie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> you funny, yeah, man. Uh, so uh, Mulatto's calling herself the Queen of the South. Did you co-sign that? Yeah, uh, yeah. Right now, why not? Who else going hard right now from the South? That's a girl. You name her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, no one's gonna give you the crown. You gotta take it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Probably my favorite song on the album, though, is uh, Dope Game with Jeezy, uh, Yo Gotti, and Bigger Rankin. Appreciate that, too. That's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. And that was that was like the last song I made. You feel me? I had Dead the Hook. And I put I pulled up on Jeezy's video shoot. And um, it was Jeezy and Gotti. I pulled up on that video shoot. And when I was leaving, Jeezy was like, man, send me some shit, man. I know you're working on your album. I would listen to my hooks. Well, I gotta send them dope game. That nigga sent that shit back fast. He sent that shit like two, three days, no more than four days. And as soon as I got hit verse, I sent hit verse to Gotti. Like, shit, I need you on there, motherfucker. Gotti sent back heat. And then got down. He did his verse in like a week. I had did I did my verse last. And then shit. We put it out. Right, because I think, what, Jeezy starts it off? Yeah. I mean, you're doing the hook, but Jeezy starts off the verses. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, that's a real, real introspective chorus, too. I mean, what do you say? Like, some of my aunties, like half my aunties. Yeah. Uh, addicted to cocaine or hey, something like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You on your shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, is, that, yeah. Uh, is that actual facts, or is that just a line? Nah, them facts. You know, a nigga grew up, like, I know a lot of people got probably an uncle or a cousin or auntie, somebody on cocaine, crack, got them, whatever they are. But yeah, nigga seen that shit growing up. So nigga don't forget that. You saying? Nigga, I ain't, I ain't saying that the shit on my aunties or nothing. I'm just telling my story or something I had to go through or something I seen that I know people gonna relate to. Feel me? Yeah, I mean, I got crackheads in my family um, <laughs> that uh, that aren't allowed any, anywhere near my house. <laughs> they, they don't even know where I live. <laughs> uh, I've, I've heard some absolute horror stories about the type of shit that they did to try to support that habit. Uh, you know, and it's tough when it's it's close to you. You know what I mean? Like yeah, because it's like... You, you, 
you can't say it. You be you be wanting to say somebody, but they got their own mind and they're going to do what they're going to do. And that shit just hurt you trying to keep trying to help them. You feel me? Yeah. Add- addiction is a motherfucker. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you, you can't really do anything about it. You can't give them money because they'll just spend the money on more drugs. Okay, yeah, you're going to be higher. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you really just got to keep your distance at one point because they're just going to drag down whatever the hell you're doing. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's tough. It's tough. You know, it, it's not people I had to necessarily grow up with, but the people that are close to me that had to grow up with them really just told me some really rough stories, man. Um, you know, uh, it's sad. It's sad to have to go through something like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you had a situation where you were at a music, uh, a music video set and you shot off a gun on accident? Yeah. <laughs> what what exactly happened there? Man, GT, yeah. We was sh- I was shooting a video with GT and got down. I had just, like, I shot a scene, but I was like, man, I need a chain. Put on a little arm for T-shit. So everybody else had it on. And I'm like, damn, you want me to f- perform with a gun or something? I'm like, what, what you want? He like, shit, you want a real gun or a fake gun? I'm like, shit, it don't matter. I ain't finna shoot it. I'm thinking they bring me a fake gun. And then cause when I get it, I unfold a bit. I'm like, I ain't never seen no little shit like this. You feel me? So I cock it back. Cause they looking real. I'm thinking it's fake. But shit, they look real. I'm like, this motherfucker look real. So I cock it back. When I cock it back, she's like, nah, don't cock it back. <laughs> so I got stuck. So I got now I was aiming it at the ground, you feel me? And I just hit it. I ain't think nothing was in it, but that shit just, it shot. And I said, oh, that's why you said don't cock it back. You feel me? But, man, nah, nigga know how to work a gun. That's why I aimed it at the ground. If I would have shot that motherfucker another way, then you know a nigga ain't know how to handle a gun. You feel me? Right, and everyone went running <laughs> as soon yeah, as he yeah, did that, that shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, I only was looking like that. I thought I shot somebody ass in the feet, man. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, look, when you, when you go to, like, movie sets, right, and I, I've been on actual real, like, big budget movie sets, they have actual gun experts on there that are handling, like, their job is just to handle the weapons, right? Yeah. They're making sure nothing's loaded, that... Whatever else. Yeah, so we ain't had that but, on set. It's the hood set. <laughs> right. So why why would someone just hand you a loaded gun? No shit. It was for the scene. We went. He he didn't think I was gonna pull the trigger or nothing. So shit, I can't blame him either. You feel me? Okay. <laughs> no, no one got hit though. Luckily, I can't blame my dog. Now that's my dog. Shit, we was in it together. Uh, but now there was a situation uh, where I mean you didn't have the gun but you were shooting a music video I think in June 4th in some uh, in some apartments yeah and uh, I guess 21 shots went off at one point and a 15 year old boy got grazed nah, I don't know about no boy again a boy got grazed that's what that's the article says. A fifteen year old boy got grazed in the thumb, which doesn't sound like a very serious situation, but you know, still that's gonna make the headlines. Yeah. Uh, we was I don't know, we was in I was in the um we was in down Sit Hunter Marsh Street. I was showing a video with my boy Bob and then she we just heard like probably like so gunshot, you feel me? But then nobody know where they coming from, but everybody started shooting they just started shooting back. <laughs> we kind of knew like the area where they were coming from, but it like they was outside the gate. You feel me? So it like shit. Oh, they just was shooting shit. Okay, and the article said that you. Well, I guess you had a Bentley. 
there and uh somebody shot my fucking road rush who were with us man nigga ass on the ground shooting on the fucking ground <laughs> so your rolls royce got hit like a little hole like like it, it just went to leaking right we see all the oil leaking like what the fuck so we trying to find the hole we couldn't even find the hole in the car we trying to see, we thought like a bullet hit the ground and probably hit the pan under it but then we look on the side like a little bit of that hole and and you could tell it hit and then hit the oil pan or something. Yeah, that shit coming like fifteen thousand to get fit. Oh yeah, an exotic, an exotic getting anything done. I remember when I had my Maserati, I had a little problem with my drop top. That shit was like twenty five thousand or some shit to yeah. get it fixed. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Once once you get the exotics, man, anything that you try to fix, that cut them parts. Them parts part be leg. different. That would it be? Yeah. I mean, you've been in a few of these kind of situations where at a video shoot, shit just pops off. Uh, I mean, does that really make you look different at doing video shoots? Like, not to do them in apartments? Nah, that was just one. The the other time on no video shoot, we was just chilling. That shit just happened. You know, you can't stop shit from happening. Shit. Yeah. It's yeah. life, shit. They shoot us in the mall. They shoot us everywhere right now. Shit. Oh, yeah, Lennox Mall. <laughs> lit up recently. You heard about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that was ridiculous, man. So, it you know, seems like, it almost seems like things are getting worse right now. Just with, with the whole pandemic and everything else like that, it seems like people just don't give a fuck anymore. I don't know. People, I don't know. I can't, I can't say. Mm. Well, uh, in August of this year, uh, Yak Yak Gotti, (laughs) Yak, there, there's a, there's a picture of Yak Gotti, uh, sitting on your, uh, or standing on your car. Man, that nigga a hoe, man. (laughs) This is uh, a young thugs artist. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the two of y'all, you you and Thug have been kind of doing their back and forth. I mean, when you fired off the gun, he was making some comments on it. Um, is there any way that y'all could work it out? I'm saying work what up? Whatever, whatever issues y'all got, and I don't know what the issues are, but could could it be worked out? Y'all do some music out. together. We ain't, we ain't nothing to work out. Nothing to work out. Nothing to work out. He over there. I'm over here. He he in L. A. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the A. Shit. What we gotta work out? Okay. So you're saying he doesn't even stay in Atlanta anymore? I don't know what's him. Shit. Okay. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. Well, uh, after our last interview, there was the whole cucumber situation. And um you know, it seems like after that, you and uh, you and uh, Regine had a breakup. And, and she said in a, I think she was on a, some reality TV show, she said that, that that the cucumber challenge was like the last straw uh, with y'all. Um, when you look at that situation and, and the breakup, do you feel like you didn't do anything wrong? And it's oh, just, that shit, it, it, not really. I don't give a damn. I still like. I I I understand where they come from when they like. Yeah, I just shouldn't have come in and shit. Or I shouldn't have been at the party. But like, shit, I I, I got. I'm hosting the party. You feel me? I'm just here. I ain't got now. Putting no cucumber in no girl mouth and shit. You feel me? And when I commented on a girl sucking the cucumber, like, shit, that's some shit I ain't never seen. I'm just like, oh my God, what the fuck? You feel me? That ain't no shit to break up with a nigga for. You feel me? It be some deep shit going on. <laughs> well, uh, Regine, I think she was on a show, and she, I guess, talked about how she talked to her dad, Lil Wayne, about the situation. And he said, uh, Lucci... He loves you probably, but he's not in love with you because of the actions and the things that he's doing. Uh, sometimes when people don't lo- know 
love themselves, they can't love other people and you can't blame them for that. Sometimes people just don't know how to love. Meaning what? I don't love myself. I guess that's what Wayne is saying. I love everybody, man. I take care of so many folk. Glad. You feel me? We ain't gonna talk about that. <laughs> well, my I, I heart say that. Not that big, man. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Well, <laughs> I, I'm saying all this because it seems like y'all are back together now. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Okay. But yeah, I ain't no bad nigga. Check because I got down, went to a cucumber party, bro. You feel me? <laughs> I, going to a cucumber party or, or commenting on a cucumber don't mean a person do not love a person who he's with just because he's seen something on Instagram and commented, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm I'm rooting for you guys as a cover as a couple. Oh, Honestly, yeah. I think y'all are a, a good couple, down, right? Now, did y'all officially break up after that and then get back together, or were y'all really just kind of together the whole time? We were like, we were just talking, broke up and talking. You feel me? Nah, that shit go. Mm -hmm. Uh, you did an interview with Angela Yee, and you said that part of the problem was that you're you have three baby moms. Nah, hell yeah, nah, I got two. Two. Okay, sorry. So you have, you have two baby moms, and then you have your girlfriend, and sometimes not everyone kind of gets along, and then you got. The I didn't kids say it was a problem. Like she asked me, did nah. they get along? And I was like, shit, you know, shit, we working on this shit. They ain't just the best of friends and shit. That's what he said. They're not the best of friends, yeah. uh, but we could be in the same room. The shit could be cordials for the kids. You know, yeah. their sister and brother, they want to be together. And you also said that the, the Regine is actually great with the kids. Yeah. Uh, but does that sometimes cause problems? Because now you have this kind of high profile girlfriend and, you know what I mean? People... You know, sometimes you see this a lot where, you know, like for example, like you, you see the little baby situation. You know, you find out he spent a whole bunch of money on some girl and now the baby mom's is upset because he's spending more on some random chick than, you know, the child support and, and whatever else. And then like, you know, someone someone ends up getting a real girlfriend and then, you know, the ki the, the baby moms feel like, they're not getting what they're supposed to get and, and, and all that type of thing. Do these types of problems end up in your relationship? I don't have those type of problems. Okay. Mm -mm. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, and you have four kids. Yeah. And I got I three guess little girls you're... and one little boy. I got two girls by one girl and I got a bond of girl by one girl. Okay, but your first two kids were born in the same year? Nah. Nah? Like they're a year apart, one seven, one six. The two, okay, three right, year olds well, were born in the same year. Okay, okay, there you go, yeah. You see your two, two girls pregnant at the same time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so how far apart are the kids, age-wise? Like a month, two months. A month apart. One on birthday September twenty third, and one on birthday October thirty first. Okay. When that was happening, did did both the kids' mothers know about this at the same time, or did they find <laughs> out later? Nah, they knew they were both pregnant. How was that conversation with both of them? It wasn't really no conversation. Shit, like. It is what it is. <laughs> like, like you pregnant? <laughs> you got, you got two different pregnant. women pregnant at the almost the exact same look, time. You got to both... know though, Vlad. Look, I already them been my baby mamas. You feel me? So they already knew. Got down like shit. When I had Liberty, shit, I had Justice the next year. So they already been. They couldn't get no mad at each other or no mad at me. They probably were a little mad at my eye, but they ain't just, I ain't see it. Shit. Hey, man, listen, if you can handle it all, more power to you. <laughs> you know, money helps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure money kind of lubricates the situation a little bit, you know, more so than, than being broke. It calms it down for a while. Calms it down, right. 
Because you're actually in a situation where the kids could be comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, and you want to have more kids. I got to have more kids. All right. You and uh, Regine ever talk about kids? Nah. Nah? We ain't never really talked about them. You don't talk about kids, though, man. You just make them motherfuckers. Yeah, not always. <laughs> yeah, see, I well, was you know, young. Listen, man. I was young, and I was just... I might just net in that shit. <laughs> and then shit, she get pregnant. I mean, my jean, I got good strong jeans, the motherfucker. <laughs> 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 yeah, that shit go. Well, being in such a high profile relationship, because this is Lil Wayne's daughter, you know, you're gonna get people are gonna say shit. So, for example. You know, uh, NBA young boy. He mentioned uh, Regine in one of his uh, one of his lyrics. <laughs> you called him a a real bitch for saying it. What you call? <laughs> what I call him? You said, "Boy, a real bitch in person." <laughs> I was that time shit. <laughs> I'm saying though, I might know some. Oh yeah. I might okay. know some. I might seen him might in person. Some? I might seen him in person before. All right. Something you want to share right now, or are you gonna keep it yourself? Nah, I ain't gotta share. It. Okay. Not on Fair here. enough. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Kodak Black. I remember he went on live and he mentioned Regine at one point also. Um, man, I fuck with you that, know, man. You feel me? I ain't even trying to, you know. Okay. But I guess my point is is that it seems like when someone mentions your girl, you get upset and a lot of times you feel like you need to I ain't say nothing. I ain't say nothing about it yet though. You know, you didn't say anything about, about Kodak Black, but you did you did respond to, to young boy. Yeah, cause that was some dip. You know, come on man. Who you gonna let somebody say that about your fault? Come on, none of your fault. Yeah, I, I, I feel you, but it it gets life. to a point where it's like, look, she she's a celebrity in her own I right. Go, Damn, you ain't gonna be out here doing all this shit, no. Come on. Fair enough. Nigga, that's Fair ain't playing like that, man. You feel me? They're like, nigga ain't letting nobody play with their people like that, bro. Well, I feel you. Nigga going to nigga shit by shit like that, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were down. Well, one of the one of the big stories that came, and this is kind of close to your whole situation, was Lil Wayne took that picture with Trump. Uh, did you you and Regine have that have a conversation about that at all? I ain't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> okay, how, how did she feel about how how did she feel about that? Uh, I don't know. We don't talk about that. We okay. can't talk about that. We don't know what Wayne had going on with Trump. How are we going to talk about that? Well, here's here's my theory, right? And, and you don't have to comment on it. You don't have to confirm or deny it. But th this is what I think happened. I think that because Wayne is facing those, those Fed charges over that gun. What I think happened is that Trump told him, <laughs> take this picture with me, give me a cosign, and I'll give you that pardon on the way out. That's what I think. Yeah. What's wrong with that? I think I think most people would take that. I think most people would take that deal. Face it. Am I going to do these ten years, or am I going to take this one photo? Oh no, shit! Add the world, see what they'll do. Shit. Yep. I think most people would take that photo. Uh there was a. I think back in October, you were uh, you messing around in the ocean. On point. On point. On point, October 27th, 2020. You were out in Miami uh, on some jet skis and you decided to do a backflip off a jet ski. Yeah. Then what happened? I did a backflip off the jet ski in the water. In the water. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I lost my Cuban. You lost a $75,000 oh, Cuban link a... chain. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't tripping. I got insured. They're going to get their money back. Okay, so I was going to ask you that. You, have, you got it insured. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and I just want to, I mean, l let me just tell tell everyone now, because, you know, a lot of people are going to be listening to this. Don't get jewelry if you're not going to get it insured. 
Well, you can get it, but just make sure you get it insured. You see? Right. Now, you know, people but if you don't have the insurance money to, to go it. along with it, that shit shouldn't that shit shouldn't be that much. If you can afford some jewelry, you should you should be able to afford the insurance. You feel me? That's what I'm saying. So so in this particular case, you just went to your insurance company and they replaced it? Nah, I don't I don't go that fast, you feel me? But it's still gonna get replaced. Takes a while. Yeah. Okay. Now uh do you have diamond teeth now or did you go back to regular teeth? Diamond. Still diamond. Okay. Well, at one point, you took your diamond teeth out. Yeah. I was just getting them clean. You feel me? See, I had veneer first. I chopped them. I, I shaved my veneer down to get these. And then when I went and got down, I went and got my teeth clean. That's when I posted that picture with my teeth. Right. Which look crazy, let me just tell you. <laughs> and I, and you, you obviously did that shit on purpose, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to show the picture right now. Cause, <laughs> Cause basically what they have to just shave your teeth, your real teeth down to like little smaller yeah. teeth, basically. I, look, see, mine were different. Now they, they don't gotta shave everybody's like that. They like I have veneers, so I wanted my goddamn I wanted these to be like my veneers and not like sit on my veneers to be big. So goddamn they had to shave them down to like when they did my veneer. You get what I'm saying? They basically took the porcelain off and shit. They fitted the um the um diamond teeth just like that. Okay. My question is though, why would you post that picture? Shit, I knew y'all were gonna be goddamn <laughs> laughing and talking shit. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, you're, you're there by yourself. It's not like someone caught you in public. You decided to take a picture. Nah, I went of my. Yourself. I really look. I really was with my dog, Bop. Mm, Bop Mena. We got down. We were just leaving the on um, dinner. I like why they off in the post this shit. Watch how yeah, I bet this shit get reposted there. Well, <sighs> straight did that shit, Ben. And I was just telling them how like you down there got to humiliate yourself just to got down get you know. Just showing how, like, man, if you do stupid shit, watch, watch how they entertain that shit more than the real shit. Feel me? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm looking at the article right now on VladTV.com. That shit got like 140,000 views, 138 comments. Uh, so it says in the article that you spent 120,000 on your diamond teeth. Damn. Oh, damn. 120,000. So, uh, how big are the diamonds on each tooth? I don't know. Man. I got these motherfucker two years ago, Vlad. Okay, but I'm saying like <laughs> this isn't just like pave I diamonds. Said, to be said, and they flawless, and and they like they just him. You feel me? Everybody shit ain't like mine. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you spend that much money, you probably have some big carrots in each of the teeth. Nah, because the bigger they is, they, the, the easier they'll fall out. So you don't want to really get them too big. You just oh. want to make sure the diamond's real good. You feel me? My shit okay. Keep ringing, bro. Do you plan on keeping the diamond teeth or are you going to go back to veneers? Um, I ain't going to lie, i be fucking with my teeth now. But I might go back probably. I don't know, like what? I don't know, probably about three more years, five more years. They ain't get me some white tea. I don't know. I ain't going fast. Right, because I'm looking at our last interview, which was, uh, I mean, earlier, what, what, when was it? Our last interview was... Was that 2018? August, August, it was no, 2019. It was like, yeah, like July, oh, was yeah, like August of, of last year. And yeah, you still had diamond teeth back then. But you were talking about how you spent 60000 in your veneers. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but you still had the, the diamond joints. So you, I guess you had what, the veneers first, then you went to the diamonds? Yeah. Okay, now you're gonna stick to the diamonds. Yeah, I might go back though, but not now, no time soon. Yep, I, I feel you, I feel you. Um, One of the things that uh, they got a little bit of traction, you said uh, I made a way for all y'all new little rappers. Uh, explain what that means. 
I just know it's a lot of nigga. You know, when I came in the game, I was like one of the first goddamn. Man, how can I say this shit, man? <laughs> I don't know, just my melody, the way I rap, bro. The shit I talk about, my pain type music. Nigga wasn't rapping like that, bro. Nigga got down. And you can hear it in some of the new rappers, how they, you know, you can hear that shit. Yeah, self explanatory, you feel me? That's all. So, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you harmonize a lot, yeah, but, but that made, was already kind of kind of being done. Not not like how I was doing and what I was talking about, you feel me? That's I don't know. I feel like niggas were making, I don't know, different type of music before I came in. They were making like high geeked up music. When I came in, I was talking about shit like shit niggas were going through, what a nigga ain't have, what a nigga was trying to get, what a nigga gonna get. I did all that shit. So, you know, my shit, they're different. My story, different. My shit, real. You can see that shit. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. no, I feel you. I feel like, yeah, I mean, I see what you're going with this. Like, well, how your shit's a little I more been introspective. I every goddamn hood in America, you feel me? Like, before any rapper. I done met all, they had, all the new rapper that been to my show, you feel me? Like, singing my shit word for word. So, they had, you know, they can know when I, what I be talking about. That shit got now. Yeah, man. Well, listen. I mean, clearly you made a you made a lane for yourself that has been working the whole time, and you built yeah, your fan yeah. base up, and it continues to grow. So, you know, you can stand on that. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. stand on that. Um, King Von got killed in your city not too long ago. Yeah, man. I right, Peter Von, man. Did you know Von at all? I ain't know him like that now. You just met him here and there. Yeah. When you when you look at something like that happen in your city, you know, and I I remember when I interviewed Boosie, like I interviewed Boosie right after that happened, and like that hookah lounge where he got killed, Boosie said he was invited to that lounge that night. Like the promoters wanted him to come, and he was gonna come, and at the last minute he just decided he didn't want to go. The hookah lounge was telling me, you know, come out. You know, everybody was trying to get me to come out. I was gonna go, bro, but you know, I had to make a move, bro. And damn, bro, I just feel like, I don't know, bro. Everything happened, bro, but I probably could have talked to them little niggas or something, but that shit fucked up, bro. You know, when you see something like that happen in Atlanta, uh, how do you feel? What you mean? I've been, I mean, look, you know, look, bro, I stayed in Atlanta like all my life, bro. I'm from Summerhill. So I done seen this shit all my life. That shit ain't new to me. Like, you feel me? So I, I don't feel no type of way. I just be like, damn, man. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you just feel like, though, in 2020, more rappers have gotten killed than any other year? I mean, you but look don't at you look, though? Don't you know, like, in 2020, it's way more rappers than in 1996. So shit, yeah, that increases yeah, the population. But... Like you see Biggie and Pop were beefing back then and one of them died. So now it's a lot of rappers and a lot of rappers beefing with a lot of, like they got beef. So shit, it's the same. It's just more got down. It's the, pop, the population just, I don't know. I don't know, man. I just feel like, like look, 2020, Pop Smoke, FBG Duck, King Von, uh, Mo three, all known dudes with real like this. Not just like the local rapper who works at UPS and you know just raps on the side and has a thousand followers. These are all guys with millions of followers, like big songs with a hundred million views and stuff like that. But listen, no, listen, no, Vlad. Like, like everybody you just named, like, like they really like look, look where they came from and they get rich. So now you more got down easy to spot. You more easy to find. The nigga know your cars. Nigga know this. So you just gotta move carefully. But the nigga still be having problems before the got down fangs. So you can't just wash away your problem once you get rich. You feel me? That shit be like shit. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like I said, I've I've been into hip hop since pretty much the beginning and. 
Yeah, there are more rappers now, but I just think the violence level is worse now. Yeah. I just, I just, I just feel that's the way it is. Um, just a lot more gunplay, it seems. <laughs> Don't nobody want to like fight, it. man. Ain't nobody fighting. No, nobody wants to fight, and I think, I think, especially with everyone got a camera now, no one wants to take that ass beating on camera. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> nobody want to get that. Yeah, well. Yeah. It's sad, man. Well, I'm glad you're still safe, considering all the various situations you've been in over the years and this is just the shit that i know about i'm sure there's shit that never made the news that you know you kept to yourself nah everything y'all seen that's it <laughs> 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 all right so so you got your new project out what's next for you um what's next man i'm gonna drop a girl project in the beginning of next year you feel me uh, i'm working on my artist my label yfnbc i got bot menace you feel me he on my album wish me well three um number seven on camera and um he finna drop a project too called distant i mean down trip called different design and we gonna go all the way with that shit and i just been working on that trying to build my label with my partner spitty and shit it's working i'm seeing it man because like i said we talked a year ago and since then you've leveled up some more <laughs> and you were doing well back then yeah you know what I'm saying? Like, you were doing well back then. If you had stayed the same, you'd still be good, but you actually leveled up. From what I understand, the new project's like the number one uh, rap album on, on uh, Apple Music. Hey, yeah, yeah, right? number two all genres. Yeah. Number two all genres. Yeah. It's a big deal right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah. a big deal, man. Yeah, it seems like people are fucking with you, man. People are <laughs> fucking with you. You're dropping dope projects. Um, you're getting good features. You're getting good beats. And, um, you know, you're pretty much doing all the hooks yourself on top of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, that, that's, that's the rare part. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's one thing to, to drop a hot 16, but always have to grab someone to do a hook. Yeah, I can do all but, that shit myself. Right. You feel me? Rap, same my hook, harm in the background, whatever I need. <laughs> do you usually write your shit down or do you just go in and just start freestyling? Nah, I just go on the booth and then I just listen to the beat. Sometimes I might hum over the beat, catch a melody, and then put the words in it. Or sometimes I just punch in line for line. You feel me? Well, whatever you're doing, it's working, man. Congrats on your success uh, once again, man. It's always a pleasure. Uh, you know, me and your guy, uh, Fly Go Way Back, um, you know, from, from his first artist, from Rich Homie Quan, uh, to no before then to to Trinidad James yeah, actually yeah yeah from Trinidad James uh, it seemed like he he got a good ear for talent um, you know and uh, you're in good hands with him man always a solid dude and uh, you know you, you got solid people at your label so you hey, yeah yeah man you. I want to I want to um, thank my whole label matter of fact while we right here yeah, the TIG style the Warner style. You know, everybody been going hard to get this project out, and it was a success, you feel me? I just want to thank everybody. That's what it is, man. Uh, like I said, always a pleasure and honor, man. Wish you all the best in the future. Appreciate we'll talk it, soon. my boy. No doubt. Peace. All right.